Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service of Holy Communion on this third Sunday before Advent. If you may be not quite so sunny this morning, but an awful lot easier for seeing the little cursor on the computer screen, which uh, has become my weekly bugbear trying to see it in order to move it around. We welcome everyone joining us on the live stream and give thanks to God that for at least three weeks it's been stable. So let's let's hope it continues in that fashion. Our first hymn this morning, number 822, when morning gilds the sky. Help us to amend what we are, 
and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in your goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> reading from the book of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again, as the high priest enters the holy place year after year, with blood that is not his own. 
for then you would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it, as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that for judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn this morning <coughs> is number 199, Forgive Our Sins.
of people not turning from the destruction of the planet or accepting the judgment of their peers. Jesus' call to follow him is the message of Mark's gospel. The gospel of David with a clear message makes straight the way of the Lord, work towards a time of restoration. It is a message of hope, a message of good news. Later in the gospel tradition, Pilate will ask, what is truth? The question facing those gathered in Glasgow and those assembled in Parliament is, who shall we follow? The same question faces politicians around the world. Whom shall we follow? Shall we follow the prophets of doom? For those who say, fear not, all is okay, trust me. Where shall we find truth or the compass that leads us to truth? Is it in the commands of God and the authority of Jesus? Or is it to be found in our common humanity and in our respect for each other and for what sustains us? The disciples who've been told left everything, an act of courage, an act of faith. The psalmist in Psalm 8 says, out of the mouths of bays and succulents comes the praise of God. There are many cries from the younger generation, us older ones, to mend our ways, give the people of the world a chance to live and to thrive. The time we are told for words is over. The time for action has arrived. Jeremiah was a man wanting to run away from what God was calling him to do. Indeed, we are told in the early chapters that he hid from God. Are those who lead our economies seeking to run away from the hard facts of a changing world? Can they let go of national interest and see the wider top context of the global world? In which we all lived. Can they be courageous enough, as were those first disciples, to leave behind their businesses to follow Jesus? After Jonah had delivered his prophecy of judgment, and the people had listened, it was then that the people turned from their sinful ways. And God changes his mind and spares them from the destruction he was minded to bring upon them. But Jonah, his own. He feels betrayed. What we learn from this episode of Jonah is that God does not give up. He keeps on calling. And secondly, that he is able to show generous pity, even to those who perhaps barely deserve it. But it is the nature of God to love that which he has created, and to long to draw it back to himself. So that, in faith, I can say, God does not give up on us, even beyond death. <laughs> Mark's Gospel reminds us of the urgency behind the call of Jesus. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe. That is, turn again. Let go of the past. Walk into the future which is upon me. It is a call to, first of all, let go of the pressure of social and political convention and look for the truth in all things. And secondly, the call to repentance is an invitation or a summons to return to the ways of God, to listen and receive the message of good news. Once again, in our 21st century, we hear the echo of the gospel to our mind. Climate change is upon us. Time is not on our side. Turn again. Renew your ways and walk in the promise of God. If the world is to benefit from all the time and energy expended in Glasgow over this two-week period, then it requires to own the love and generosity of God, that is, tend to the needs of the poor and vulnerable, wherever they may be, to let go of the indulgences we grant ourselves in order that others might simply live. The message of Hebrews is very much there is only one chance, one opportunity. Now is the time to act. Amen.
we stand now to affirm our faith in the words of the Lord. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven, of all that it is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from the heart, life from night, true God from true God, begotten of not made, of one being with the Father, to forgive all things for me. For us and for our salvation, yea, God, for the God of the Holy Spirit and the Gretchen and the Savior. For our sake, he was crucified on the cross of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again from all the superstitions. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. He will come again in glory to judge the and his kingdom will have. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of all, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through all of us. We believe in one Holy Spirit. We acknowledge our baptism for the Holy Spirit and the life. Amen. Now let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. The response to we wait on you, Lord, is our hope is in your mercy. We wait on you, O oh Lord. Our hope is in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you called the brothers to leave their boats at the lakeside and to follow you. Give your church courage to step out in new ways to proclaim your good news to the world and to engage with the world. We pray for our parishes and the Nile Valley group. We pray for the diocese. We pray especially for Bishop Graham and the work that he's undertaking at COP26 in Glasgow as he continues his role as the lead bishop on environment and climate change. We pray that the church will keep up with the matters that concern and motivate the world, that we may engage with all the people that we come into contact with, to learn from them and to explain and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to them, which is a gospel of good news. We pray, O oh Lord, that we might shed hope in situations where hope is so often missing, where pessimism can take over. Help us to be agents of peace, of hope, and of a willingness to find change. We wait on you, O Lord. Our hope is in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, your call confronts us with the need for repentance. Turn the hearts of all to the values of your kingdom. Lord, in the face of the challenges facing this great world, this marvellous creation, help us to be humble. Teach us humility, not just for all that has gone wrong, for how we have not stewarded the world and its resources as we ought to have done, nor indeed been grateful for the magnitude of the gifts we have received. But help us to set humility as the bedrock of our response to you and your love. Teach our leaders humility. Help it to be their starting point too. From it to build, slowly, 
to learn wisely, to govern gently. We pray for the world, for all those who are suffering the ill effects of climate change and global warming, those who continue to suffer the ill effects of the sinfulness of humanity. We pray for all those places where there is conflict and war and violence and corruption and graft. Help us, Lord, to acknowledge all that is wrong and work for peace, for hope. Grant us humility and repentance. We wait on you, O oh Lord, and our hope is in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you drew working men into your company. Guide all those who are responsible for industrial relations and fair conditions of work. We pray for all our trade unions, for our professional guilds, all those who seek to bring fairness and equity to working life. We pray for those throughout the world who still labour in dangerous conditions and threaten their health. We pray that all may have a voice at work. We pray especially for those who seek to be brave, for the whistleblowers, those who seek to bring the wickedness to light. We pray that they will have the courage to be, continue to do so and the protection for having sought to bring truth. Expand our concern for all those who pay a price for the things that we consume, the things that we require or feel that we need. Help us always to see who is involved in all these processes and to want as good a life for them as we want for ourselves. We wait on you, O Lord. Our hope is Lord Jesus Christ, who came among human life and shared its joys and its sorrows. Bless all those who are struggling with the strains and cares of this world. Those who are unwell in body, mind, or spirit. Those who are lonely or sad. Those who feel themselves without hope and all those who worry and care for other people. We continue our ministry of prayer for David Bowman, David Kirkland, Ruth Clare, Gwen Wallace, Sarah, Amelia, Kelly Sanderson, Christine Rayner, Anna Lott Smith, Tom Boyle, Matthew Wise, Ida West, Stephen Milner, and Julia. And we continue to give thanks for all that is being done for them. We wait on you, O Lord. Our hope is in your mercy. Lord Jesus, your net encompasses all humanity. Gather to yourself, we pray, all those who have died. Among the recently departed, we pray. For the souls of Marlene Conning, Duncan Conning, Margaret Smith, Reginald Smith, and Garth Bandage. And in our year's mind, we pray for the souls of Margaret Sanders, Eunice Gould, Raymond Nazer Priest, Peter Fowler, Alan Maddox, Elsie Platt, Dorothy Collins, and Bill Sider. We pray for their souls and we pray for all those who mourn. Bring us, O oh Lord, to rejoice in your saving love. We wait on you, O oh Lord. Our hope is in your mercy. In a moment of quiet, let us offer to God the prayers of our own hearts, our cares, our concerns, and our hopes and our gratitude.
Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the Savior of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, to Christ our Lord, who came and preached peace to those who were far off and those who were near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The notices for the coming week on the printer sheet, then please take that away with you. Reminder that next Sunday is Remembered Sunday, and so there's two services at 10 50, uh, one here at Norwood and one at Castlewood. The additional services are pending in Southacre at the beginning and the end of the day. Um, looking a little further ahead to the 28th of November, I have shared this with those on the live stream, but just to say that. Clearly, there's going to be a significant, what well, I suspect, a significant number of people. So I'm sort of to make sure I've got it. Uh, but uh, therefore, I think it's going to be difficult for us to operate on the basis of that Sunday of only using every other queue. So we will endeavour to have the doors and the windows open, which may mean we want to come with an extra layer. The heat will fine. Um, and also, we invite you, please, to wear masks and to hand sanitizers will come in and if you are able to do so to lateral flow test yourselves in the morning just to make sure if for any reason you think you're not well on that occasion it may perhaps be the wisest choice to watch us from the uh, television uh, on the basis that we do seem to have cracked it now well i said that would be a wrong next time so, um, so yeah, it's just sort of general because we should put some extra chairs around as well to try and make sure that people have enough space. Last week, I should have formally telephoned them that I was going to retire. Unfortunately, the diocese did not send me the paperwork until Monday morning. So I now give my formal notice that I will cease to be the rector of the Narbella Group on the 28th of November, my 70th birthday, because we're not allowed to go beyond that date. Not that the church practices ageism, it's just those are the rules. Ever the record. Well, it's all recorded for posterity. <laughs> now, somewhat appropriately, our offer freedom is 687. Take my life and let it.
God, in Christ you make all things one. May we who are reconciled at this table bring wholeness to our broken world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> the Lord is here. The is us. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find your voice to sing your praise. <laughs> The end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave the thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will die. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once more upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit, Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, Form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last through the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Mary Magdalene, St. George, and James the Great, St. Leonard, and all the saints, to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in you, with all, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. <laughs>
Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Because we all share in one bread.
On either side of the river is the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are there for the healing of the nations. God of peace, whose Son Jesus Christ proclaimed the kingdom and restored the broken to wholeness of life, look with compassion on the anguish of the world, and by your healing power make whole both people and nations, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out to the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those who you love, now and into all eternity. Amen. Our final hymn this morning, 834. Will you come and follow me? Thank you. 